Uh, Councillor Russell Perrin, um, last time I interviewed you, you just um, retained the council. It was two o'clock in the morning. You were very ebullient. Yes. Um, but a few days later, you decided enough was enough. Well, I'm still quite ebullient. I'm very pleased that we won the election. And what a rare example across the country for a Conservative council to increase its majority against Labour. So still very, very upbeat about that. But I thought it was the time was right for me to take a step back. I've put almost two years in as leader. Um, it does take its toll and I think we've got the all-up elections next year and I think it was really important I make way for somebody to be able to really take that fight on next year. Because to explain to some of us, because having one job's hard enough, mm. but the idea you know, of you, you're um, an assistant head teacher, yeah. so you, you do all that all day, Yes. and I, I know, you know, and more, um, but then you're more or less, you are going from there up to the water gardens to start oversee a multi-million pound organisation. Yeah, it's That's quite really hard. It's quite weird when you say it like that, but yeah, I would finish work there, and every night would head up there, and could work quite late hours. Um, it's yeah, you know, I don't say it for any kind of sympathy. It's just a matter of fact. That's that's what the job entails, and I was grateful to do it. Um, it was a great honour to do it, but I would be lying if I said I would could take keep on doing that and fight an election, which is what would re be required. Um, for the all ups next year, which should see all 33 council seats come up for grabs. So, you know, I would be doing my party and everyone else a disservice if I went into that election trying to hold down a full time career, run an election, and also uh, lead the council at the same time because that doesn't stop one election's on. And you did you not say you might have said this off the record? I'm not sure now, but you took on the place to, to when Andrew Johnson stood down, sort of well you weren't entirely sure anybody else wanted to do it is that the circumstance well that was that was partly the circumstance absolutely but we we've, we've uh, i think we've done an awful lot in my time then i've been on frontline politics in harlow now for 15 years almost and i've not really had a substantial break from it in all that time so actually we've i've achieved a lot my party's achieved a lot in that time and i've actually reflected on some of the things we've achieved over that 15 years and um, we've had enterprise zone status come to the town and that was uh, something I achieved when I was the lead for regeneration almost 10 years ago. Um, the car parks being free for the first hour, that was a campaign I led a number of years ago when the Labour Party were in charge and uh, managed to overturn their budget decision to keep those car parks free. So it's everything from the majors to the minor. And in my time as leader, we've overseen um, a massive transformation in the regeneration vision of the town, taking us from one of the smallest landowners in the town centre to one of the largest but also looking at regeneration projects at various places across the town. Um, so we've done an awful lot in the time and the team that I've worked with have been absolutely incredible. The cabinet I've worked with have been absolutely incredible and the backbenchers have been fantastic. And because uh, it's not just about one person, um, I'm easily replaceable. There'll be others that come after me. But the fact of the matter is the team has worked immensely hard to change the fortunes of Harlow in short order. And I'm sure that will continue to happen. Because it isn't, you know, you described, you know, the work-life balance, but I've had, you know, I've had that discussion with Mark Wilkinson, yeah. John Klempner, <laughs> Mark Ingle, and now yourself. It's a, it's a tricky thing to do. But would you say, not your legacy, that's a bit of a sombre word, but I think one of the last Council of Cabinet meetings and your papers, it was just full of so much business. Yes. You know, so much stuff, which clearly has got to carry on. Yeah. Is that not a tribute, to, would you say, to the, the type of culture you had at the council? Yeah, we had. A, I, I felt we have so much to do in such short order, and I didn't take my foot off the pedal. There was countless projects. Even this week, I've still been working. Um, this week, we're only Monday, but in, uh, since I've res uh, announced my resignation, we've been still getting lots of projects done, completed, um, there's a flurry of press releases still to come out after this interview, um, Michael, with projects that are still ongoing and some won't quite come to fruition whilst I'm the leader, but will come to fruition this year. There's lots in the wings still to come. Um, did, just could, for the avoidance of doubt, so next year you're up for re-election. Are you standing down as a councillor then or are you fight, going to fight Sumners and Kingsmore? Uh, I haven't made my mind up yet, but I'm still going to serve Sumners and Kingsmore as a backbench councillor this year. Um, the association hasn't selected its candidates for next year. I, there's nothing in my head that tells me I'm going to step down, um, but I don't know what a year what a year may may entail. And what about things out with Harlow? You know, you you stood uh, in the 2019 general election. Are you yes. still have ambitions in that world? In that world, it's whether they want you. <laughs> 
but I wouldn't say no. And um, but you're still going to you know when you're at council at the back bench you know you yeah when you're when you're in shadow as a, a, a shadow uh, finance portfolio you know you you were there you were scrutinizing you're asking difficult questions challenging you're still going to have that role even a role on the back bench yeah absolutely I, I'm quite looking forward to it because I've never been on the back bench in the 15 years I've been involved in policies I've been on the front bench all that time and I'm rather looking forward to it because I'll be able to ask all the different questions without actually having to worry about <laughs> how it's going to be solved but I look forward to uh, working constructively with my colleagues on the back bench um, because I'm still going to be very much involved and we've got lots of projects that as I say I'd still like to see through and um, we've got the name in the Zelensky Avenue so there be that, that those will be being put in soon we've got our obelisks which are cultural heritage obelisks that I've worked a lot with Sue Livings on and they'll be being installed soon um, there's there's so much more to do but I feel it's not the right place for me to be on the front bench doing that work now well really Russell Perrin thank you very much